Hi everyone, my name is Titin and welcome back to PSLE Science where I'll be going through the water cycle today. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so for the first segment of this video, I am going to go through the importance of the water cycle. Okay? So, what is the importance of the water cycle? The water cycle actually ensures a continuous supply of fresh water through evaporation and condensation of water for all living organisms to survive, ensuring the continuity of their kind. Okay, so the water cycle is actually a cycle, right? So a cycle always repeats itself. That's why there is the continuous supply of fresh water through evaporation and condensation of water for all living organisms to survive. So this ensures their continuity of their kind. So that basically means that they can live on, so their kind can live on and not extinct, and not get ex extinct. Okay? Very important, okay? Now, they might ask this type of question in uh, PSLE. They might ask, what is the importance of the water cycle? And this is the kind of answer you must give, okay? Now, let's move on. So, for the second segment of this video, I am going to go through the water cycle diagram, okay? So, let's take a look at it and understand it more better. Okay, so for the water cycle diagram, so this is the water cycle diagram, okay? So it starts over here at the water bodies. So from the water bodies, it actually goes on to evaporate, okay? So basically it is gaining heat. Okay, and then from evaporation, it turns into water vapor, which is a gas, okay? Okay, so let me just verify over here. So this uh, letters over here, L, L, G, and L. So L actually stands for liquid, okay? And G actually stands for gas. Okay, so this is basically the legend. Okay, so after water vapor, it actually condenses to form clouds, okay? So clouds are actually not gases, okay? They are liquids. Because uh, most students think that clouds are a gas, but actually they are made up of tiny water droplets, okay? So this is very important to take note of. Okay, so during condensation, you actually lose heat. Lose heat, okay? Okay, then after the clouds, there's precipitation. So precipitation is basically raining, okay? Let me write raining. And there is no heat transfer here. Very important. Okay, so from the rain, right? The rain actually goes down into the water bodies. So that, that also has no heat transfer. Okay, now let me explain the evaporation and condensation heat transfer. You can't just say gain heat or lose heat. You need to give a proper statement. And there's actually two types of statement you can give for evaporation and condensation. You can say gain heat or lose heat, but the phrasing is completely different. So you need to know that for every heat gain, you can state it in a heat loss. And for every heat loss, you can state it in a heat gain. Okay? So let me explain. So for evaporation, right? The first way we can say for gaining heat, we can say that water gains heat from the surrounding air. Or for losing heat, we can say surrounding air loses heat to the water. Okay, does this structure sound familiar? Because it is familiar. So in the heat, heat right, I've actually taught you this uh, structure, right? HPC structure. So for H, it's heat gain or heat loss. So that's the same structure that this is following. So water gains heat from the surrounding air. Surrounding air loses heat to the water. Okay? 
So this is important. So this, so I hope you still remember how to answer this time of structures. And it is the same for condensation, okay? So, but it's, it's the same structure for condensation, okay? So for evaporation, the water can gain heat from the surrounding air or the surrounding air can lose heat to the water. These two mean exactly the same, okay? You can state either one of these when they ask how it evaporates, okay? And for condensation, we can either say water vapor loses heat to the surrounding air or we can say the surrounding air gains heat from the water vapor. And still, these two are exactly the same, okay? I hope you understand that. Now let's move on. Okay, for the third segment of this video, I'm going to go through understanding the water cycle. So we just went through the water cycle diagram. Now I want you to truly understand that diagram, okay? Okay, so what does it happen? So for first, what happens is that the water in the water bodies gains heat from the sun or the warmer surrounding air to evaporate to form water vapor. And after this, it goes on and the warmer water vapor then rises and loses heat to the cooler surrounding and condenses to form tiny water droplets, okay? And after this, it doesn't stop that. These tiny water droplets actually gather to form clouds. So when it just forms tiny drop water droplets, it doesn't make clouds already. It actually gathers and forms one big cloud, okay? So this is how it forms. After that, we must say as small clouds are formed, the tiny water droplets then combine to form larger water droplets which then fall as rain. So when there are a lot of clouds, right, they actually like might uh, come into each other and they might actually combine because the water actually combines with the other water droplets and it actually becomes bigger and it becomes uh, heavier as well. So when it's too heavy, right, the it actually has a certain limit so when it is too high the water droplet actually fall down as rain okay so I hope you understand that now after that the rain water returns back to the water bodies and the cycle repeats itself so this is the continuity part so this is how it continues okay and after that we can say that this ensures a continuous supply of fresh water for all organisms to survive. Like I said, continuity. Okay? Now let's move on. Okay, so for the fourth segment of this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the water in a terrarium. Okay. So I hope you all know what is uh, uh, what a terrarium is. If not, I can show you today. Okay, so basically a terrarium looks like this. So it's basically a jar where there's a plant inside and you water it once, okay? You only need to water it once and it will actually, uh, it can live for 50 to 60 years, you know? Uh, That's how long a terrarium can live with just uh, watering it once for those entire 50 or 60 years, okay? So basically, how the terrarium works is that there's a plant inside, okay, and there's moist soil, okay. This moist soil is because you watered the, uh, watered the plant, right, so the soil actually becomes moist. And so there's actually a mini water cycle inside over here. So the water in the moist soil actually gains heat from the sun to evaporate. So this one is evaporate, so let me just put E. And then two is actually condensation and clouds, okay? CC, condensation and clouds. So uh, it actually uh, hits this uh, lid, right? So it actually goes over here. And then it comes down as rain, rain, okay? So it's actually like uh, dripping down, so it's like rain. So let me put R, R, P, R, R, P, because P is precipitation. Okay, by the way, you do not need to know this word precipitation for your syllabus because the, the teachers would not mark you down if you just say rain, okay? 
and then it returns back to the soil and then it repeats itself again so this is the cycle now let me explain it more in depth okay so for step one we need to identify where the water vapor is coming from so we've already identified that the water vapor is coming from the moist soil okay so the water actually gains it from the sun right and it evaporates so water from the moist soil gains it from the warmer surrounding air and evaporates to form water vapor okay water is lost through the stomata of the plants as water vapor in the process of transpiration okay so do you know what is transpiration okay so transpiration is basically the process where uh, plants lose water through their stomata okay so it's basically like um, plants do need water but they give out water because of the heat okay so the sun again okay important okay and then for step two we need to use the hot water concept so the hot water concept is basically condensation okay the warmer water vapor rises and comes into contact with the cooler underside of the glass cover okay in this case we do not need to say glass cover but we can say uh, just a lid would do just the lid would do okay so let me change it lid okay loses heat to it and condenses to form water droplets okay the water droplets fall back into the soil and the cycle repeats itself so this is how the plant does not lose water but actually still have the water that it needs to survive okay because when the plant actually takes in the water right the plant itself is giving out water again so this is the uh, part where you need to know that okay so i hope you have understood whatever i've taught you for this video and i hope you have a deep understanding of the water cycle and i'll see you in my next video where i'll go through many questions which are important based on the water cycle and thank you and goodbye i'll see you in my next video Bye!